Welcome to the Health and Wellness Show. This is Paul Hamilton. Today we're going to be talking about stress, headaches, and TMJ disorders. We're going to do this from the perspective of a registered massage therapist. Today we have Adam Levins with us. Welcome to the show, Adam. Thanks, Paul. I'm glad you could make it with us today. Before we get started on some of these topics, I was wondering if you could tell us a little bit about your area of expertise. Sure. Well, as a massage therapist and uh, an instructor at a massage therapy college in Midtown Toronto, um, I guess I consider myself to be a treatment-based therapist, so I focus on patients' complaints, um, formulate a plan to best address their symptoms, and my focus is, is really treating people with chronic pain, um, headaches, uh, posture-related tension, and associated symptoms with that. So how did you get started in your field? There wasn't really one thing that made me say I want to be an RMT. Uh, it kind of happened just through research and looking at different professions and a couple of needs that I um, wanted met with that. And and one of the a couple of those were I guess looking for a profession where I could work with people, uh, being able to give back to others or helping them improve people's lives, and really just having a sense of uh, purpose and, and really. Um, be able to give back, I guess. Yeah. Yeah, you feel good about what you're doing and how you're helping people. Yeah, it's been it's been really great. I've been really fortunate to feel I've made the right decision. I, I still feel like even I'm in my tenth year, so I f still feel like I've made the the right choice, and I don't really feel like I have to. I'm working. It's more something that I enjoy doing, so it's it's really great for me. That that's often really a sign that you're on the right track and that you it doesn't seem like work. You love going in and in, in the morning and the day and, and doing what you're doing and helping people in the way that you are. Mm -hmm. I, I think there's a misconception about the amount of education. Like, there's a lot of education and training that goes into becoming a an RMT. Can you tell us a bit about that? Sure. Yeah, I received my massage therapy diploma um, here in Toronto from Elmcrest College, and it's a two-year program. It's 2,200 hours. And so it's quite intensive. Uh, you know, we have a lot of hours that are not just in the classroom, but also in outreaches and, and clinics for working with the public. Um, and shortly after that, I, I worked towards a certificate in adult education from George Brown. And that was just so that I could continue uh, learning. And also, I always knew I wanted to instruct at a massage therapy college. So, so I'm able to do that now. And that was uh, also part of my, my process. But being a business owner, I've taken courses in marketing, um, taxes, networking, social media, the usual things you need to take in order to have an idea of how to run a successful business and having those business models to, to run by. Um, and I guess as a registered massage therapist, you, know, you always need to update your skills and you can't just fall back on what you were taught 10 years ago because things are constantly changing and, and progressing. So I take courses that are focusing on expanding my techniques, my assessment skills. And, and this year, I guess I've been more interested in know, like my knowledge about, increasing knowledge about fascial system of the body and how to address that as a whole. And the fascial system is just basically this net that surrounds all of our structures within the body. And if we took everything away, left the fascia, we would just have a 3D model of ourselves, so it's more of a supportive structure, and and this can become damaged and um, needs treatment as well. So, I've been taking some courses uh, this year that has really just opened up my mind to how the body works as a whole unit, as opposed to just focusing in in one spot as to where the pain is, and and just treating people as a whole. So it's been really great. And that obviously contributes to being able to provide you know better service to your to your patients and it fulfills your need and want to grow and continue to be um, learning and, and becoming more effective in your field. Mm -hmm. yeah. So what type of services then do you provide at your clinic? Well, at my clinic, personally, I perform massage therapy, but we also offer chiropractic and acupuncture and naturopathic medicine, so it's a whole, um, it's a more of a wellness center and more of a holistic approach to health and just looking at every aspect and not just one. So personally for me, the way that I perform my treatments is through an initial assessment and it's pretty thorough. Uh, I really want to find out what's going on with that person and um, you know, I guess part of that is also 
I ask a lot of questions. <laughs> People, I always <laughs> have to kind of apologize. I'm like, I'm sorry I'm asking you so many questions, but I just really want to know what's going on with you and how I can best help you. Um, so my treatments consist of a deep tissue massage. I, I think I work more on a deeper level of the tissue instead of just more relaxation. It's more therapeutic. And some techniques I use, just more stretching, fascial release, trigger point therapy, um, that kind of thing. And overall, my, my real goal is to look at the cause of someone's symptoms and making recommendations to correct them. Otherwise, I just feel like I'm in a loop of them coming in, having this problem, and them going out back to whatever they're doing that's causing it, and, and they don't know what's, doing, what's causing it, and I don't know what's causing it, and just treating the symptoms. So we're really looking at the cause in the way how I treat. I imagine there's quite a wide range of symptoms that, that you treat. What are some of the most common symptoms of your patients? Well, I think the most common symptom, because I, I deal with chronic pain and headaches and posture-related tension, is, is people that are in pain. Uh, they have decreased mobility. Um, they're feeling stiff or tight. And so... The areas that I treat most often are going to be the head and neck, typical people, you know, sitting over desks for long hours, and also the low back and pelvis. I find that that's probably one of my favorite areas to work on, and I'm able to give people a great deal of relief through uh, some of the techniques I have I can help them help them with that. Um, so, oh, I was just going to say, you know, these areas that I've just mentioned tend to create more problems because of people's posture. So when people sit all day for long hours, they slip into poor posture. And they aren't really aware that that kind of posture can create imbalances in their muscular system and structural system. And it leads up, leads to a buildup of tension and, and long-term and long pain. So what role do you think then stress plays in these symptoms? I think it's, uh, it's a huge factor, creating tension in the body uh, if we look at just stress, stress can be many different things. It can be a physical stress or it can be an emotional stress. Um, if you're dealing with an emotional stress and the mind is under tension, you're feeling overwhelmed, that can easily translate into what's happening with the body. So you know, the people that come in, they tell me, um, they're like, oh, this, my neck is where I keep all my stress. But I think stress is more maybe looking at the emotional side, so are they anxious, are they overworked, are they overwhelmed, that kind of thing. And if you put that emotional stress on a constant level, then it just leads to them not being aware of what the body's doing. They really don't have that mind-body connection because their mind is just so overwhelmed. And I think that people tend to react to that and they put themselves in positions where they overload their muscular system. People at work, they may not take breaks because they feel like they have to keep working or they lose awareness of how they're breathing. A lot of people breathe through their upper chest instead of breathing through their like lower abdominals, uh, their diaphragm, and just losing awareness of their posture. If you walk into any office building and you look at anyone sitting at a desk, they're going to probably be leaning over, hunched, you know, staring at the computer screen, and over time, this posture becomes a habit, pain and tension occurs, and it can also be seen in people who have high levels of anxiety, depression, sleep disorders. You know, these people change how their bodies are positioned in space. You don't really usually see someone who's depressed, who's looking up and positive, and you can see that positive energy coming from them. They usually mm -hmm. have more, like, I don't really know how to describe it exactly, but just more of a posture where maybe they're slumping their shoulders or they're looking down more often, and, and that's not a positive. That's more of a negative type of posture that they're maintaining, and, and that can lead to physical manifestations, I guess, of pain and tension. So it's really a holistic approach that you're looking at it from. For example, like you said, with stress, it could be physical and emotional. And within each of those categories, there's a lot of possible causes. And it sounds like, you know, part of what you do is to try and identify what those root causes are. Yeah, I think it's really important. It's really yeah. important to figure that out and try to educate the person as much as possible as to 
what they, why they might be experiencing these symptoms. So with keeping that in mind, from your point of view, how might headaches be caused, for example? Well, there's, I think the, it's really endless. <laughs> there's so many <laughs> causes of headaches, and there's actually over 200 types of headaches. Um, but we'll just maybe talk about the main ones, migraines, tension-type headaches, and a um, little less common but still quite common are cluster headaches. Um, so those three are the kind of the main ones, and then we have many different subcategories under that. But some of the, just the, the normal causes would be what we just mentioned was stress, so feeling overwhelmed, and that can manifest in your body. Um, dilated blood vessels, that's more to deal with the migraines. Muscular tension, even grinding your jaw, um, clenching your jaw. Some people grind at night, and that causes a build of tension in the jaw muscles and can lead to headaches. And such simple things that sometimes we don't think about, but dehydration can lead to headaches, or even too much coffee, too much caffeine. Um, typically, when we're looking at a tension headache, more things that I would be treating, we'd be talking about trigger points. So trigger points are those small knots that people feel in their muscles, um, the little nodules or those tender areas. And those are just sections of muscle that are stuck in a chronic contraction. And many times if we look at the neck or the jaw, those can, once we press on those spots, they can actually create referrals. And, and they're the, probably the most common cause of tension headaches in people. So you mentioned about the jaw there, and, and that ties in with the TMJ, or the temporal mandibular joint. What do you see as the relationship then between the TMJ, the head, the shoulder, neck, and, and even hip perhaps? So just in the way of what TMJ dysfunction is, it, it just relates to muscular tightening, pain in the muscles of mastication or, or those chewing muscles, and affects the jaw joint. So usual symptoms that we may feel would be some popping, uh, clicking, um, limited range of, of movement to the jaw, so people can't open their jaw all the way, uh, even a feeling of the teeth not meeting properly when the jaw is closed. So, you know, I, we've mentioned, I've mentioned a couple of this, but one couple of points here, but when we have that emotional stress, tension can develop anywhere in the body. So a common area is the jaw. We tend to clench our jaw, and a lot of people aren't even even aware of this, and some people grind um, or clench their jaw uncontrollably in their sleep. So a lot of people wire different bite plates and things like that to help alleviate some of that build of tension. But if you look at your if you look at your jaw, these jaw muscles are always active. Uh, they counteract gravity. So if they were completely re relaxed, your jaw would be open all the time, just by the effect of the weight of the mandible and the, of the jaw bone coming down. So these jaws, these jaw muscles don't actually rest, and clenching makes this even worse. So imagine contracting your fist for hours at a time. At some point you're going to fatigue, your arm's going to start to hurt, and so this is going to be the same as your jaw. So in the way that the TMJ relates to any other area of the body, um, it can be related to any number of structural issues, even as far away as the low back. And or the feet. So in anatomy, we, we tend to look at the whole body, but then break it down into all its components, so organs and blood vessels and muscles and ligaments and the bones. But really, I think we need to remember that we are one piece, one functional unit. So an issue in the low back or the pelvis can cause a rotation in the hips or in the spine, and that's going to cause compensating tension maybe in the upper back and the neck and that can lead all to issues all the way up to the cranium face and jaw so we need to look at something that might be going on below to treat what's going on above so it, everything is, is really quite strongly connected right if you're if you're tilting your spine to one side your head's going to compensate by looking back straight or sometimes even people put their um, phone between their shoulder and their jaw, so that can even cause a little bit of deviation. Mm -hmm. But that can be coming just from lower down, so there's a, a really strong connection throughout the whole body for really any issue. 
so so keeping that in mind then with 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 you know the head the shoulder the neck the hip the interconnectivity and and how would you then go about treating headaches granted that there's a lot of different types but but give us some ideas of how you might treat these conditions so in, in the way of my treatment approach i would say for most conditions it doesn't vary too much from condition to condition because my goal really is to find out what's going on and what's causing it so the assessment and treatment aspect I think will just take care of itself uh, if massage therapy and, and the types of treatment tools or uh, techniques I have can help and in regards to headaches I think that understanding the person's lifestyle is important so what are their daily activities what kind of foods are they eating uh, their water or coffee intake, do they know what initiates their headaches? When does it happen? Is it happening at the end of the day or are they waking up with, with that? Uh, also, are they on any, any medications? Sometimes those can be the cause as well, just the medication that's causing the headaches. So I find that tension right. headaches are treated best with a technique called trigger point release. So I'd mention those as just being very small sections of muscle that are, that are contracted and there's so many muscular attachments um, for muscles in the neck and the jaw to the skull. And any of those muscles, if they become tight or overworked, can create patterns of headaches when these trigger points develop. So it's actually quite amazing when we start working on someone's neck and all we really need to do is find that exact spot and it will recreate their headaches. So that might not sound great in the moment of a treatment, right, because we're kind of giving you a headache temporarily. Yeah. <laughs> but the long-term goal is to release that tension, and if we can release that in the treatment, the headaches become less often and less intense, and through a series of treatments, they will actually should dissipate and go away if that's the cause, if the cause is the tension. And and the lifestyle activities are the other part of it. It's really finding out, is there anything else that could be causing this or contributing to it? So part of it is, a, is an assessment of what's going on with their lifestyle. You know, the, like you said, the amount of water that they have or, or when they have headaches or what their medication situation is like. Um, but then also integrating either massage therapy or trigger point therapy, depending on what, what the causes may be. And, and this may be involve a series of... Uh, of, of treatments to help release, you know, that tension. Right. It's not usually one treatment will fix someone. Usually by the time someone's coming in to see me, they've already had weeks or months of ongoing headaches. So it's really hard to undo all of that in 45 minutes or an hour. So usually a series of treatments is something that gives you the best results. So how do you believe your approach then would contribute to overall wellness beyond just, you know, the acute, you know, headaches or, or types of pains that people might have? I think that wellness is, is a broad term. Um, it's used, I think, to describe more of an ongoing process with yourself and becoming more aware of your health and becoming more responsible for making those healthy lifestyle choices. So I think that wellness can be achieved by creating a balance between your physical, your emotional, and even intellectual parts of you um, to achieve your optimal health. So I feel that I can assist patients directly by drawing attention to their physical well-being um, and the intellectual parts, and hopefully that has a direct connection to their emotional well-being. So a great example of this would be just what we've been discussing the last uh, few questions here. You know, when someone comes to me to address ongoing tension headaches or pain with their TMJ, I treat them and help alleviate their pain. So I also take the time to educate them about the cause, what's going on with them, why this would, um, why these symptoms would be starting, and then provide them with a greater understanding how to prevent the pain from returning. So I feel like I've kind of tackled the first two, the physical and the intellectual parts. And this should really create a shift in their emotional well-being. Because if you think of someone in ongoing pain and the lack of information they may have about what's going on with them or their condition, it can be disruptive to someone. 
and how they are feeling emotionally um, you know, can lead to such things like depression, anxiety, even lack of connections with others. If they are always in pain, they don't want to go out and socialize, or they have headaches, they can't go and hang out with people they want to, or you know, pain can be very debilitating. That's on the extremes, but you know, on even just from day to day basis, can create a lot of a lot of issues, social uh, or sure. social anxiety, but, but just anxiety in general about what's happening with them. Yeah, how how you're feeling is 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 helping to create the the glasses throughout which you see the rest of the world. So you know you're going to be coming at it from a positive point of view, or perhaps a more irritated point of view, or a depressed point of view. If you're if you're in pain, mm -hmm. and if you're not understanding what it takes to be on the right track, so you're saying you know by your your treatment and by the proper education, you know the, the end results can be a much better emotional um, outlook on life and greater you know mental disposition, so to speak. It's been uh, it's been amazing. You know, you just get those people that come in and they're like, you know, I've seen two or three people before. I've been dealing this with, with this for months or years, and I don't really know what's going on. And you know, you're able to make a little bit of a breakthrough, or you know, maybe sometimes I am able to really help them quite a bit. And and it, it changes. It's quite amazing, like day and night, really, and how they how they interact with you after that. So I guess that ties back. I guess that ties back to where you started off this conversation about, you know, part of why you got into this field is, you know, your your desire to want to help people and, and, and part of your purpose in life. And that certainly, you know, contributes a lot when you see the positive results of the uh, of the help that you've given patients. Yeah, it's, it's great. It's perfect. So, so would you have a couple of tips for someone who's looking to understand more about, you know, pain in the head, headaches, you know, neck and shoulder pain, those types of things? Sure. I think if you want to understand more, part of that is, is is finding the right avenues of where to get that information from. So, there's a couple couple ideas I have, I guess, for that. Um, one would be to find a healthcare professional um, if you are, you know, suffering from any any pain or tension in these areas. Find a healthcare professional, you know, an RMP or a physio, chiropractor, or even osteopath. Uh, have an assessment. So during this during the intake, hopefully, you and that therapist can can really make connections to why you're having these symptoms. And during that time, you can have any questions answered, things like that. You just get more education about what's going on with you, because everyone's going to be a little bit different. Um, there's a really great website that I um, uh, visit. Uh, it's www.saveyourself.ca. And it has an incredible amount of information that's very easy to, to understand and very easy to read and very credible. All the information on there um, is just amazing. And also using, using the Internet in general can just be a great source of information. I think the more you read and the more you search, um, the more you'll be able to gather. And, and some information may not be 100% correct. So I would say make sure you're reading from reputable sites and not just like, you know, the top 10 ways to decrease, you know, tension in your body. You know, finding someone who's writing about blogs all the time or finding, you know, people that are experts in their field and, and following them. That's some great ideas. Thank you. Uh, now, if someone was looking to find a uh, registered massage therapist, what should they know? What should they look for? Well, there's so many RMTs out there and everyone is going to be different so they're going to be different in the way that we assess and the way that we treat and if you're going to a spa you may just get a relaxing massage if you have an issue um, that you want addressed you may want to consider going to a clinic uh, you may get better results finding someone that deals with things or deals with the condition that you have more specifically I really think that doing some research uh, about a potential therapist, such as checking their credentials or their education and what their area of focus is can be important. Uh, you want to have a therapist that can assess and treat you effectively. So I feel like a lot of this can be done online. So a lot of people put themselves out there on the internet and, and looking around that or even getting a referral from someone that you may know um, that's had a good experience with another therapist might be good. Um, and also, 
don't hesitate to call or, or even send them an email explaining your issue and, and ask them how would they go about treating you. Um, I think that would be some good information to know. It's kind of like a little bit of a job interview. You're not, if you're really committed to wanting to make a change, you don't want to have to go through two or three therapists to find the right one. Right. So taking a little bit of time to do some research on that um, is, a, is a good idea. And I think that once you've decided on an RMT and received some treatments, you really have to evaluate, are you getting the results you and the therapist have expected? So everyone's different in the way that what they're going to tell you, but for me personally, I usually recommend if something's been going on for a couple months that we, we need at least three or four treatments to see if that is enough. And that should get things moving in the right direction. Not always, but I think if you do three or four treatments, you should have an idea. Is this working? And there's no point in having that person come back from my point of view. If I can't help them, I need to refer them out to someone else. So that would maybe be a discussion to have with your therapist. If nothing's changing, do they have another approach that can help you? Or why do they think it's not changing? Just don't continue to go um, because the therapist says, well, it's going to take three or four months to undo all of this. I think that if they're offering you those ideas of what is the cause, how can we correct this, what are some exercises I can be doing to help with that, you know, you should start to feel better if you're willing to make those changes and really look at what the cause is. Most issues will start to start to alleviate, I guess, within a couple of treatments. So I think that's important for most people to to know. I think that's a great way of looking at it. And and with that in mind, if listeners wanted to get in touch with you, what's what's the best way that they can do that? Well, I can be reached through my website. So my website is www.davisvillehealth.com. So Davisville Health, just um, like the Davisville Subway in Toronto, uh, very close by to that. Or by calling my clinic, 416-488-4414. That's terrific. Um, Adam, thank you very much for being on the show today and sharing your expertise and your insights and how to treat all these conditions. We really appreciate it. Thank you very much for your time. Well, thanks, Paul. I appreciate the opportunity to speak with you today. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.